How would you feel about having an extra pinky finger? In May 2022, Japanese scientists released their first look at a robotic sixth finger they were developing to understand how the body adapts to an extra body part. After strapping the device next to the pinky, they were pleasantly surprised to discover that some of the volunteers could even play piano within a few hours of training and practice. One of the researchers who worked on this project, Yoichi Miyawaki, a professor of electrocommunication from the University of Tokyo, said if this kind of technology develops, people will be able to freely design their bodies. The definition of normality will no longer exist. And what he said couldn't be closer to the truth. Today, there are thousands of researchers backed by millions of dollars working tirelessly on human augmentation projects that could potentially convert you and everyone you know to a cyborg. The Japanese company, Jizai Arms, is working on making a spider-like backpack with four robotic limbs. And some scientists are working on producing 3D printed organs. Elon Musk's Neuralink plans to take it a step further with a more seamless blend by implanting AI chips directly into our brains. For billionaire investor Elon Musk, digital intelligence and AI technology going mainstream is inevitable. It's already causing job shortages worldwide, with people turning to AI to write work reports, give free legal advice, and make faster financial predictions. It's even a running joke that people type real-life scenarios into ChatGPT to get a response on what to do or how to reply to sensitive work emails. So, to counteract this growing fear of AI stealing human jobs, in an interview, he granted, saying, One of the things that would be good in ensuring that the future is one that we want is to more tightly couple the human world with digital intelligence. But some people might argue that he's taking things a tad too far. When Elon Musk launched Neuralink Corp in 2016, he brought together some of the world's most high-profile neuroscientists with one goal in mind, to merge the human brain with a computer. Despite sounding like a plot straight out of a sci-fi movie, they were able to successfully create a brain-computer interface using an ultra-thin N1 implant that allows you to control your computer or phone wherever you go. And to demonstrate that their claims weren't far-fetched, after starting human testing in 2023, they showed off a human participant that could telepathically control their computer cursor, play chess, and even adjust the music volume. So, who knows? In a couple of years, we might all have telekinetic abilities when controlling our phones. Imagine being able to switch between apps, make a call, or take notes on your iPad with a single thought. That could also mean no more carpal tunnel syndrome, or finger pains when you use your mouse. However, you'd have to be willing to go under the knife if you want this enhancement. To that end, Neuralink is also working on a surgical robot that can effectively and reliably insert these implants into your brain with a needle thinner than a strand of human hair. But consider how much such an implant could drastically increase your work output. We could argue that it would be worth it in the long run. On the other hand, it does raise significant concerns about data safety. There's still a lot we don't know about how the input and output system of a fully integrated brain-computer interface would work. Would we have to link our brains to our laptops as you would with a Wi-Fi connection? What if a hacker gained access to your chip? Would that mean gaining access to your thoughts? Think about how disastrous it would be if your boss could read your mind during a meeting. In a world where even your most private thoughts could be exposed like a nude picture, would you still go ahead with getting a Neuralink chip? Tell me in the comment section below and give this video a thumbs up before we talk about the other ways humans are becoming cyborgs. Thankfully, researchers are also working on less invasive human modifications. If you're looking to go on extreme hikes or run several hours without getting fatigued, you can now buy a robotic exoskeleton that massively improves your physical ability and endurance. For example, the Hypershell Outdoor AI Exoskeleton is specifically marketed to sports enthusiasts that are looking for an extra power boost during their next adventure. 
even the military is utilizing exoskeletons to create cyborg soldiers. Despite ideas for the first exoskeleton being around since the Industrial Revolution, over the decades, their functionality has remained mostly limited. To be frank, they only ever seem to hit the mark in movies like The Terminator. However, leaps in our understanding of the human body, combined with the development of AI motion sensors, have significantly improved the quality of our robotic suits transforming them from rigid scraps of metal that only slightly improve your strength to powerful transformer-like suits that can make you faster, stronger, and even bulletproof. As far back as the 2010s, the US planned to revolutionize warfare by creating a real-life Iron Man. They announced two different exoskeleton projects that were meant to make soldiers twice as strong and fast. It even had a metal exterior to prevent damage from bullets and AI sensors that could check their vital signs. However, there were too many concerns that forced them to shelf both projects. For one, the initial iterations were mostly metal, making them expensive to produce and maintain. But more importantly, these large chunks of metal made it extremely difficult for undercover operatives to carry out their mission without being spotted. It would be like if the, the Iron Giant wanted to sneak up on you. You'd definitely hear it over a mile away and be ready for it. Still, the US Army and other countries like Russia and China are looking to create lighter and more agile exoskeletons that can help them create the world's first robotic enhanced super soldiers. In such a world, humans without any enhancements would barely be able to survive. Some of the new models China is experimenting with even use metamaterials that can make the suit invisible to human eyes, creating an effective cloaking device. If so, it wouldn't just be a question of overpowering a robotically enhanced soldier. How would you even fight something you couldn't see? Even the industrial sector could benefit from biomechanical suits. A worker wearing a robotic suit could get their job done faster when they can lift over 200 pounds with ease or perform repetitive tasks like welding with better posture. There would certainly be fewer workplace accidents on the assembly line because a robot suit would be the first point of contact when dealing with heavy machinery. However, all that improved efficiency would certainly come at a cost. Most employers would need fewer workers and would prioritize upgrading their exoskeletons over paying a fair wage. In such a scenario, many people would see themselves replaced by their robotically enhanced colleagues, as those without such enhancements would become too slow and a potential liability in the workplace. But beyond military warfare and industrial assembly lines, powered exoskeletons could change healthcare. For example, hybrid exoskeletons contain sensors and a functional electrical stimulation system that sends signals to the muscles and nerves of the wearer and makes them contract. In other words, quadriplegic or paraplegic patients could regain control of their limbs, helping them become more independent. These wearable devices are already making waves in the rehabilitation field and could drastically improve the prognosis of people suffering from musculoskeletal or neuromuscular conditions. On the caregiver end, some researchers are exploring how we can use exoskeletons to reduce the physical strain on nurses and other healthcare professionals. Like super soldiers, bionic bodysuits that improve the body's strength and endurance could come in handy when lifting a patient or moving heavy hospital equipment. Perfecting that kind of technology would improve patient handling and reduce chances of health workers pulling their backs while on the job. For all its drawbacks, seeing how merging our physical bodies with machines could improve our quality of life, especially in healthcare, making it easy to argue that these enhancements are a definitive net positive. After all, we'd still be the same on the inside, and that's what counts. So, what if I told you that we're closer than ever to replacing our organs with 3D printed replacements? As insane as that sounds, many leading bioprinting scientists 
claimed that it could become our reality within the next decade. Earlier this year, Dr. Antonia Pontiki, a biomedical engineer at the King's College London, showed how this technology is possible when she gave a presentation on 3D printing artificial organs. She highlighted how 3D printing involves converting digital models to physical objects and is quite common in other industries to produce pencil cases, flower pots, plumbing parts, and even whole houses. On the other hand, in healthcare, teachers use these plastic 3D models to make their anatomical classes more lively and educate students in a more practical way than 2D books. Even clinicians use these fake organs to practice before performing complicated surgical cases, either with hands-on or robotic surgical tools. This experience can improve their confidence before they head into the theater to perform complex operations like a lobectomy, which can improve the patient's prognosis. Besides educational purposes, scientists also use 3D models to test new technological procedures, cutting out the need for animal experiments, which often comes at a high cost and several ethical concerns. At least this way, they'd be on PETA's, you know, good side. But what has all this got to do with humans becoming cyborgs? Well, thanks to advancements in this technology, Dr. Pontiki explained that we could now turn these plastic 3D recreations into silicone molds that fit into living bodies, at least for bony implants. She explained how by filling these silicone molds with bone cement, we can successfully create implants like mandibles and ribs for patients who need a jaw or rib replacement. However, Dr. Pontiki is hopeful that in time, will be able to add living stem cells to these gel-like materials, which would eventually grow into living tissues and then into functional organs. And her hopes aren't far-fetched, considering biomedicine professor Vladimir Miranov already did it way back in 2015. As one of the world's leading bioprinting experts, Dr. Miranov and his team were able to print a functional thyroid gland for a mouse and successfully implant it in the animal where it continued to work. Considering that was almost a decade ago and research in this field has been ongoing, chances are high that we're close to recreating this in humans as well. So imagine a world where there are no organ donor wait lists because you can simply get a functional 3D replica. Well, for starters, fewer people would have to die because their kidneys or liver no longer work and they can't find a suitable donor in time. But how human would the people who receive such organs be? Could we even still classify them as homo sapiens or would they become something more advanced with their technologically altered organs, potentially improving their body's normal function and pushing them beyond their usual limit? Why opt for a replica of what you lost when you can get something better? Rather than settle for the same size of lungs after a pneumonectomy, you could get larger ones so you can hold your breath underwater longer and potentially beat Michael Phelps in a race. Or scientists could give you a better liver that clears lactic acid quicker and reduces how quickly you feel fatigued. With the right training and dedication, you could leverage your new biological advantage and compete with some of the most prestigious athletes in the world without breaking a sweat. In such a scenario, would the biological gap between people with 3D organs and those without become so wide that we can no longer call them human, but a mixed breed somewhere in between man and cyborg? On the flip side, robots are becoming more advanced and human-like. Elon Musk recently showed off a few bartending robots at a Tesla event sometime last week, and even though these prototypes had human controllers, their fluid movements were pretty impressive. So in a few years, or even months, when Tesla launches these autonomous humanoid bots to the general public, it's more than likely we'll see remarkable improvement in their movements. When that happens, it's unlikely they'll stay bound to bars or factories where they help workers with repetitive tasks or jobs that require heavy lifting. We're already seeing prototypes of humanoid bots performing chores alongside humans as sort of a personal assistant or robot maid. 
but thanks to advances in facial and voice recognition patterns, these devices could become more aware of social cues and even demonstrate impressive levels of emotional intelligence. While that might sound like a good idea in the short term, because you could chat with these AI bots, it could also isolate us from forming relationships with other humans as the lines become even blurrier. Kind of like Joaquin Phoenix from Her. With all these advancements, we have to ask ourselves, where does it end? In a bid to become better versions of ourselves, we're completely stripping ourselves of our humanity and taking on risks we're not fully prepared to handle. Every technological device comes with the risk of being hacked, and when we inevitably link our bodies to machines, we become liable to that same risk. Imagine how scary it would be if someone hijacked your bionic legs and forced you to go somewhere you didn't want to go or steal something with your external limbs. Would you even be able to prove that you were hacked? And who would be liable for such crimes? The scariest thing about humans turning into cyborgs is that it is slow and largely under the guise of advancement. After all, how do you argue against giving quadriplegics the opportunity to run or a child with cancer a real shot at life with a new organ? But the lack of regulation over human-machine integration could come back to bite us in the long run. Hopefully, as humans get closer to becoming cyborg machines, we don't look back and realize we're totally unrecognizable from the species we once were. But what are your thoughts on humans and machines merging? Do you think people with concerns are valid? Or do the benefits of human augmentation outweigh all the naysayers? Be sure to let me know in the comments section below.